Hallelujah, hallelujah. I bless you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I can hear your amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Today we are on the, I believe that we are on the last part of our series of righteousness. We have been on righteousness for four weeks, I believe. Uh, I believe that you have learned a lot. You may be seated. You may be seated. I believe that we have learned a lot. Hallelujah. I'm just excited by what God is doing in this house. You know, one of the th most exciting experiences that one can ever have is to walk with the Holy Spirit and be instructed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Is to walk with the Holy Spirit and be instructed by the Holy Spirit. When you can't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit anymore, be concerned. Hallelujah. And I believe that he's not, what I'm glad about that he's not only talking to us in this house, He's showing forth his power. Hallelujah. We are experiencing the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit all the time. Hallelujah. Today we'll be talking about the benefits of righteousness in Christ. The benefits of righteousness in Christ. I urge you to take notes. And also go to, go to our social, to our media channels, to our YouTube channel. Listen to these messages again and again. These sermons have transformed my life. Hallelujah. I have a different view about myself. Since I started understanding righteousness, I realized that, wow, it is not what I do. It's what Jesus Christ did. Not that my works are not important. But we need to have the foundation of the finished works of Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you that you reign in this house. I thank you, mighty God, for your faithfulness, for your greatness. I thank you, Father, that even this morning, you are still the same God who speaks. You are still going to speak to us. We are listening, mighty God. We are listening. Release your word in season. Release your now word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. The benefits of the righteousness. You know, since the beginning of, of this series, we have shared about a lot of things. We have shared about who we are in Christ. But I want you to understand righteousness again. Once again, I will define it for you. What is righteousness? Come on, it's, it's, it's been four weeks now. You have been listening to this sermon. What is righteousness? The ability to stand before God. As if you have never what? Sinned. Hallelujah. The ability to stand before God without what? Guilt and what? Condemnation. That is righteousness. That is what God expects us to be. I want to tell you, one of the benefits of righteousness is in worship. You know, when, when, you, when you know that you know, that you know that um, you are not guilty of anything. When you know that you are not guilty of anything, you are able to stand before your father and worship him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, God seek those who shall worship him in what? In spirit and in what? And in truth, you know, I, I, I want you to understand this. Worship 
connects you to the heart of God. Hallelujah. Worship makes you understand who God is. One of the most successful kings in Israel, David. There is no, there is no enemy that was able to stand before David. David defeated all his enemies. And one of his chief weapons was worship. David knew that he is righteous before God. Why? Because he was, the, God called him the man afterward, my heart. Hallelujah. Whenever, the Bible says, whenever God, before, whenever David is faced with war, the first thing that he will do, he will do what? He will go right straight to God and say, God, should I face these ones? Why? He had no guilt or condemnation. He knew that he has a right standing before God. So when you understand your right standing before God, you release the purest form of worship. You know, you cannot go and praise someone that you are not sure of your standing with him. Hallelujah. Imagine, okay, I'm just giving a silly example. A king call you, and you know that you've just stolen some kettles of the king a week ago. And the king come to you and say, we have a ceremony. Can you please come and be my praise singer? How will you go and praise that king? I'm telling you, you know very well that a week ago you just stolen. And the king is looking for you to come and be his praise singer. Do you, know how, do you know how you are going to praise that king? You are going to praise that king looking at your back, looking all the sides to see if the king's men are not coming to take you and God cut your head off. Meaning, you will never praise that king with, all, with, with, with the honesty in your heart. But when you know that you are not guilty of anything, when you know that you have the right standing with that king, believe you me, you will praise that king. You will call him with the names that he himself didn't know that he has them. Hallelujah. Those are the children of God. When they understand their righteousness in Christ, when you go and stand before God and begin to praise him, you will be like the 24 elders in heaven. The Bible says they never cease saying holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty was in it to come. Why? Every time when they bow down, when they lift up their heads, they see the different type of holiness in God. Amen. But when you are righteous with God, when you worship him, when you bow down, when you lift up your hand, you're going to see a different father. You're going to say, Father, I love you. That I you, you, you're just going to call him different names. And the more, the more you are free to enter the Holy of Holies, hallelujah, is the more you access that which God has for you. In other words, the righteousness, when the righteous in Christ, when they worship, they get what belongs to them. They are able to access the Holy of Holies. I want to tell you something. You can never go to God and come back the same way. You can never enter the presence of the Lord and come back the same way. So there is, there is that worship. There is that type of worship. Guilt-free worship. Condemnation-free worship. Whatever free worship. When you enter through the flood through the courtroom of heaven and begin to release your voice and lift up your voice and worship God. Knowing that you are free of any form of condemnation. Do you know what happened? Your spirit man become one with God. You become what? One with God. Those are, those are the people that God is seeking. When he said those who worship him in spirit and in truth, it is not the truth of what you did. It is the truth of the finished works of Calvary. What Jesus Christ did. That is the truth that God is talking about. Those who worship me. Because the, because the finished works of Calvary is the only truth that God understands. 
is the only truth that God knows. That's the reason why we are, we are saved by who? By Jesus Christ. We are called what? Christians. We are, you are not called the gathers. You are not called the Shulwanes. Because we are not here because of the works of the Dagadas or the Shulwanes or whatsoever. We are here because of the finished works of Calvary. Hallelujah. And there is something also that righteousness gives you. The benefits of righteousness. Many of us who have been partaking the divine nature of Jesus Christ. The day. Can you go to Second Peter 1 Chapter 1, 3 to 4. Let me go to the word quickly before I can talk too much. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow on me. Anointing for on me. If you are there, say shame. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. What does he say? As his divine power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by, by glory and virtue, by which you have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of, of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I want us to focus on the word divine nature. Are we together, church? I want us to, The Bible said, seeing that his divine power is granted unto us all things. Say all things. His divine power is granted to us what? All things. I want you to know who has been granted all things. You. Which, which part of you has been granted? The righteous you. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Most of the time we expect God God to move after our deeds. Father, I fasted for seven days. Move in this area. Father, I have given this much. Intervene in this area. Father, I, have worship, I was worshiping you. Intervene. Let me tell you one thing. Your works are good. Your works are well and accepted. They, but they must all be done in Christ Jesus. Are we together? They must all be done through who? Through Christ. Why? Because he said, he has given unto you all things that pertain to life. It is not possible that God can give a sinner all things. It is not possible that God can give somebody with shortcomings all things. Whom did he give all things? The one who have received the divine nature of Jesus Christ. Are we together? The one who have received what? The divine nature of who? Of Jesus Christ. How did you receive the divine nature? When Jesus Christ died on the cross. I want you to understand. When he died on the cross, you died with him. When, he, when, you were, when he was crucified on the cross, you were crucified with him. When he was buried, you were buried with him. But the most important thing that has ever happened to human beings is when Jesus Christ was resurrected on the third day. You were resurrected with him. Sinless free of sin. When, G, when God looks at you, he was not looking at Tabiso. He was looking at the one who died with Christ and rose up again with Christ. He looked at you sin free. That is what righteousness means. Hallelujah. So, because of this sinless you, uh, some of you are saying, but, but I just told sugar last night. 
Why do you call me sinless? I'm not talking about your deeds. I'm talking about your spirit man. Okay. Let me first just explain something first before we can go any further. The Bible speaks about the law of death and the law of life. Hallelujah. The law of death doesn't necessarily mean that the law brought death. The law was made for a dead man. For a spiritually dead man. Are we together? So, I want you to understand the resurrection. The law was made for who? For a spiritual who? Dead man. But by the reason of a, of a spiritually man being dead, the law brought forth what? Death. Hallelujah. But the law of death comes from the spiritually what? Dead man. And the law of life comes from the resurrected man who rose again with Christ. That, that, that's something that you must understand. Hallelujah. The law of life comes from who? The resurrected man. Who rose with who? With Christ. So, many of us are not partaking in the divine nature. Why? We look at ourselves as the dead man. We don't know what Jesus, we know what Jesus did on the cross, but we don't know that we rose again with him. That's the reason why Jesus Christ is called what? The firstborn of the dead. How? Who are the dead? We were dead in sin. Hallelujah. We were what? We were dead in sin. I want you, I want you to understand your benefits. You were dead in sin. So when Jesus Christ rose again, he gave you his divine nature. What is the divine nature of Jesus Christ? If he could, if he could cast away demons, so could you. If he could heal the sick, so could you. If he can speak provision into being, so could you. If, if he was the all-knowing God, so are you. Are we together? Church, uh, you, 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 you don't seem to be receiving this word the way you should. I want you to, I want you to be excited about, about the divine nature. Listen, listen to this. God said, we have been given, we have been granted to us all things that pertain unto life. I will, I will look at this, and what? And godliness. If I were you, I'll be excited about this. What is, what, is, what is the godliness? You take the character of God. You apply it in your life. That is, he said, he has given unto us all things that and godliness through what? It's through what? Through the knowledge of him. Meaning, there are mysteries, like what I'm sharing with you today. There are mysteries that must be shared with you. As you know who you are in Christ, you receive the godliness. So, the revelation of what Jesus Christ did on the cross should give you all things that pertain to life. What is that revelation? One of the revelations that he died for your sins. Okay, yes, he died for your sins. He was buried for your sins with you and your sins, yes. But the biggest one of them all is that he rose up again with you. That raising up. You know, children of God, understand resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the one that gave you godliness. Are, you under, are, are we together? So, don't walk like unbelievers. Don't walk as those who, do, who, who, don't know, who, who don't know who they are. Because one of the things that Satan exploits in Christians is lack of knowledge. Let us go back to Matthew 4. 
When Satan approached Jesus Christ, testing him, he said, if you are the son of God, not that he didn't know. He said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into, into bread. He, he was, he, the first test that Jesus Christ passed was knowing who he was. Are we together? No, it, it, the, the first test was not about the bread and the stone, no. It was knowing who he was. Why? Because he knew that God has granted him all things, including power. And he said to Satan, it is written that men shall not live by what? But by what? But by every knowledge. But by what? Every word. By what? Every what? Knowledge. Because the word represents what? Knowledge. Of him who called us. So, the knowledge that you have about yourself in Christ Jesus will determine the amount of victory that you walk in. Okay. Um, you are not getting me. Are we together? The knowledge that you have about yourself will what? Will determine what? The victory. Who are you? I'm the always sick one. Okay, you'll be sick. Who are you? I'm the redeemed in Christ Jesus. You are redeemed. Who are you? I'm the, I'm, 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 I'm the one who's always broke. You'll be broke. Who are you? No, no, no. My God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. But why, why, why don't you have money in, my, in your bank? I don't need money. I need revelation. I need what? Revelation. Because God says what? He has given me unto me all things that pertains to life. Through what? Through money. Let us read it. it. Through what? Through the knowledge of who? Of him that does what? That called us. So many of us are focusing on things instead of our right standing with Christ. Your right standing with God is your key to what you need. Hallelujah. Because you're going to go, why, why, why is it your key? I said this before. When you know and understand your right standing with God, when you go before him, you don't need faith. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's controversial. You don't need faith. Didn't let when Dinoe comes to you, she does not need faith. She needs knowledge that you are the mother, period. Hallelujah. Are we together? Am I discounting faith? No. I'm saying we, we need to learn to live beyond faith. Jesus Christ did not have little faith. Jesus Christ did not have great faith. Jesus Christ had knowledge of who he was in God. He knew that he had the right standing with God. That's the reason why even when, 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 when he called the blind to see, he did not say, Father, if you wish. No. He said, be healed. The knowledge of him. The knowledge of him. What is your knowledge about God? Some of us have converted the knowledge from Satan into knowledge from, to God. Every lie that Satan has told us about ourselves, we've converted that lie into what God is telling us. You'll never be rich again. Yes, God is saying you'll never be rich again because, because you don't give. No, no, no. You, 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 you'll always be poor. God is saying, no, 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 no. You are in right. You are the redeemed of Christ. You, in him you live. In him you move and him you have your being. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What God has belongs to you. Why? Because of your right standing with God. What is your knowledge about you? 
Can we read Second, second Peter again before we move? Because this is, this is one benefit that many, many, many Christians are, are missing it. I want, I want everybody to go to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Read it aloud. One, two, three. Let us all read about read it aloud. Hey. Wow. Woo. Mm. I want Did you see that? Did, can you see what is written there? Hallelujah. Can you see that? Can, can you see what is written? Okay. Let, 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 I, 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 I just want to highlight something. Seeing that his divine power has granted unto us all things that pertains unto what? Unto life. Okay, let us look at all things that pertain unto life. Some of them, a house, a car, income, okay, let me, let me, let me say income, provision, health, joy, peace, all things that pertain to life. All, all, all. So, you see, the, the issue is that we read the Bible running. I want to read the Bible. We, we want to break the record. I read the Bible from, Gen, from Revelation, from Genesis to Revelation in one year. And yet, you don't have all things that pertain to life. Let us check. You see, according to his divine power, what gives you access to the divine power? The finished works of Calvary. Hallelujah. So he's not saying, listen, listen to the Bible. The Bible is not saying, according to the divine power that will be given to you. No. According to the divine power, that is already what? Yours. Why? Because of your position. Check here. He Granted us all things that pertain to life and goodness through the knowledge of him. Who called us where? Unto his own glory. Church, church. When God calls you unto his own glory. Let, 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 me, let me repeat this. God is calling you unto his own glory. Do you know what has, did that mean? Moses was called Unto the glory of God through the burning bush. And he was told, take off your shoes for this is the holy place. Jacob slept. His head was on the glory of God. For when we slept, there was what? There was a ladder what going up and down, angels descending. And he, and he entered your covenant with God there and there. He said, Surely this, this is the house of God, Bethel. But when God says he, he called you unto his own glory, I want you to understand, no sin can enter into the glory of God. Are we together? No sin can enter the glory of God. When God says, I have called you into my own glory, it means that he has found you righteous in Christ Jesus. Oh, no, you don't understand who you are. He has found you righteous. He has found you befitting to partake into his own godliness. When he calls you to enter his own glory. Do you know where are you? You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all powers and principalities. You are at the right hand of the, son, of the father. What do you do? You are at the place where you make demands. You declare things and they are established. You cannot walk with doubt. Do you know who you are? 
Stop believing the lies that you have been told all along. That as a Christian, you know, if you go, if you do this, God will punish you. Do you punish your child by, by throwing them on the road and they, they run over by cars? You do that? No. Then I said, he called us unto his own godliness. Unto his own glory. Do you understand the glory of the Lord? Do you understand the glory of the Lord? When the glory of the Lord is in the place. Hallelujah. Nothing. The Bible said, when Solomon did, after he dedicated his house, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The, 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 those who are supposed to minister, they couldn't minister. The high priest could not do anything because of the glory of the Lord that filled the temple. But the same glory that filled the temple is the same glory that the Lord has called his righteous into. No, 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 you, 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 you are missing it. You are missing you, you are not there. Do, do, you know, do, do you know how you will pray when you are in his glory? You're not going to you're not, you're not gonna say, Father, please, uh, if you will. No, no, no. Father, I thank you that you heard me. I thank you, mighty God, that I've prayed. And I know that whatever that I've prayed for shall come to pass. You know, you know what? It, because it's positional. You, 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 are, you, you are the righteousness of God. God is saying, I, I don't see you. When, when you walk in, he doesn't see you. He sees the Christ in you. Mm. He has called us unto his own glory. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what the glory does. When Jesus was walking, approaching the graveyard, the madman of Gadara saw him. The glory dealt with him before Jesus can be there, can, can even reach him. And he said, Jesus, you, you came here to torment us before time. The glory will respond to certain things that you by yourself can respond to. I, I, I want you to understand this. I, I want you to know who you are. That you, you are not just a woman. You are not just a boy. You are not just a girl. You are not just a man. You have been called into a special place. How so? By the reason of the finished works of Calvary, you have received all the divine nature, all that Jesus is. So are you. Am, am I talking to someone? You, you, he, said, he said, I've given you with my divine power all things that pertains to life and I've called you into my own glory. To do what? So that when you are in the glory, when God is glorified, you are glorified also. You walk in the glory of God. There are certain things that they don't need you to pray. The glory is enough. The glory is enough. Hallelujah. But how does that glory manifest? The knowledge. The, okay. Can you go to Deuteronomy 29, 29, please? I want you, I want, I want you to, to understand how does these things work. The, th the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belongs to us and our children forever that we may do all the ways of this law. There are things that won't come to your life until revelation. Hallelujah. 
If you see yourself as a donkey and you are praying to run, to run like a springbok, you will run like a donkey. Because you don't have the revelation of a, of a springbok, you always see yourself what? As a donkey. If you see yourself as a cow, no matter, and you are praying for yourself to run like a, with the speed of a cheetah, you, you will run like what? Like a cow. What is revealed to you becomes your nature. Can I, can I repeat that again? Can I repeat that again? What is revealed to you becomes what? It becomes your nature. The revelation. I don't know why I'm stuck to this scripture, but to God be the glory. The revelation that you have about yourself right now will determine your progress in life. Can I repeat that? The revelation that you have about yourself now will determine what? Your progress or your stagnation in life. God has done it all for you already. Do you know where you are right now? Can we read again 2nd second, second Peter chapter 1 verse 3? Even if I have got a lot of notes, but even if I have to, to teach this verse for the whole service, it's fine. 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Read it again. I, I want you to know who you are. Read it again. What does it say? As, the, as his divine power, read it aloud. Through, no, through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of what? Of him. These are the mysteries that you must understand. Through how, what do you know about Jesus? What do you know about Jesus? Some of you know Jesus as somebody who is waiting to punish you when you do wrong. Yeah, you know, that's all that we know. And, and, if, and if, that is, if, if that's the knowledge of you about Jesus, you always be expecting what? Things to go wrong. But let me tell you, the real Jesus, the one who died for you, Jesus took your place. Hallelujah. He died for your sin. He did not only die for your sin, he became sin. So that you can be found righteous in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, let me repeat this. Jesus died for you. He died for your sins. And not only that, he became sin. Meaning the sin that contaminated your spirit man. The sin that made your family who they were. The generational iniquities. And everything that defined you and your same name. Jesus became that. And when he rose up again with you. You became. You became like him. When Jesus Christ stand before God, God does not see Jesus alone. He sees Miss Michelle in him. He sees Mr. Michelle in him. He sees Mr. Tangani in him. He does not see Jesus. And when he sees, that's the reason why he said, you can walk into my glory because it is not you who's walking in the glory. It's Jesus who became your sin. That is the benefit. That is the benefit that the enemy doesn't want you to know. The enemy wants you to walk in self-condemnation. Because self-condemnation will always lead to self-defeat. And he said, Who called us 
unto his glory. Can we continue? Whereby he granted unto us his exceeding great and precious promises. Check here. Can, can, can you go to four? Can you go to four? I want you to see something. Whereby he has granted unto us his precious and his certain great promises. The Bible is not saying he will grant. The Bible is not saying he will give you. It has been granted to you already. Okay. Am I talking to someone? Your business is granted to you already. Your house is granted to you already. Your increase is granted to you already. Your healing is granted to you already. Everything has been granted unto you. You are not someone who is trying to make it in life. No. Your promotion granted unto you already. Through who? Through Christ. Who died for you. When, Jesus, when God looks at you, he doesn't see Pumzile. No. He sees Jesus Christ. When he looks at you, he doesn't see you, Peter. No, no, no. He sees Jesus Christ. He sees the cross. When you walk in, I, I, I want you to have, to have this vision in your mind. It will be better. When you walk before God, it's like the cross and the blood walking before him. Do you understand that? And when God sees that sacrifice, he says, this one is righteous. This one is fit to stand before me. When you stand up, when you kneel before him praying, he doesn't see your tears. He sees the blood on the cross. I want you to have that picture in mind. That as you approach the father, that's why he says, I have granted you all things. Why? Because everything has been given unto Christ. Can you go to Colossians quickly? You will know who you are. I love the word of God. Let, let us go to Colossians 1, verse 13. Okay. Let's start from 13. I love it from 13 up to up to 18. Check here. It's about Christ. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us unto the kingdom of the son of his love. Who, who is that? Jesus Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. 15. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. Check this. Jesus is the image of what? Of the invisible God. And the Bible says in him we live, we move and have our being. Genesis 1, 27, God said, let us make men according to our, what? to our image. When you are in Christ, and Christ is the image of the invisible God, what makes, whom do you look like? I can't hear you. You are in Christ. And Christ is the image of the invisible God. Whom do you look like? Like God. Are we together? Can we read? He's the, the, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all 16. 
For, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion or principalities of power, all things that were created through him or for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. Ah. In Christ all things consist. That's why Second Peter says what? You, he has granted unto us exceeding great and precious promises through, through that we might be partakers of what? Of his divine nature. Because what? Because in Christ all things consist. Where are you? Say I'm in Christ. Say I'm in Christ. You are not in condemnation. You are where? You are in Christ. When somebody comes and tries to condemn you, you say, you know, my friend, if you, can, if, you, if you can condemn Christ, then you can condemn me. Did, did you hear me? If they can condemn Christ, they can condemn what? You. In other words, let me start English by Mr. Dag, Pastor Dagada. You are uncondemnable. So stop doing that yourself. Hallelujah. Jesus sees you as what? Say righteous. Say God sees me as righteous. Say God sees me as, as the one who has been blessed already. Not somebody who's trying to be blessed. Why? Because of my right standing with him. Change the image of yourself in your mind. Hallelujah. Some people will say, imagine yourself in a big house. What? Me, big house? Never. No, no. Don't raise my hopes for nothing, Pella. Okay, imagine yourself in a shack. At least you are talking. Mm, at least you are talking, you know. I must start somewhere. Hmm? Christ, you, poor. Christ, you, poor. It is not possible. Get the knowledge of Christ. Let us read 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, in all things that he may have premiums. Let me talk about you now. Let us look at Colossians 1.21. Colossians 1.21 is talking about you. I want you to memorize this scripture and know it. And you, who were once alienated and enemies in your mind <laughs> by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Can you see who you are? What are you? Say, I'm holy. I'm blameless. I'm above reproach in the sight of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. That, that, that's what, that's the righteous you. That is the righteous you. I'll say what I said last week. Don't ever say anything is too big for you. If God deposit a seed in your mind and you find yourself meditating about a particular concept of a particular business that look like it's too big for you, know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. Hallelujah. Because in the sight of God, you are holy. You are blameless. You are above reproach. You can enter the holy of holies and stand before God and present your case 
and God will hear you. He will answer your prayers because you are the righteousness. That is the benefit of righteousness. You receive answered prayers. You don't, he doesn't answer your prayers because you prayed. He answers your prayers before you can even pray by the reason of your right standing with him. By the time you start praying. That's why he said, before you call, I will answer. Why? He's answering this righteousness. He's answering his sons. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are above reproach. The blood is continuously speaking better things for you. Silencing the evil blood that was shed in evil altars for you and against you. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Come on, come on. Receive that in your spirit, man. You are more than a conqueror. Poverty is not your portion. Sickness is not your portion. Sadness is not your portion. Oppression is not your portion. You are blessed coming in and blessed going out because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You, that's who you are. You should know it. when you wake up in the morning, wake up and make a declaration. Whenever a word of condemnation comes, you said, no, no, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ carried my sin in his flesh so that I can be found holy and above reproach. He became sin for me. The Bible said he was made sin. Not that he was sin. God took Jesus and converted him into sin and took his holiness and transferred it to you so that when he looks at you, you become deserving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry about the pandemic. Don't worry about that. Know your position. He called you unto his own glory. I thought I would finish righteousness. No, I only taught the first passage of my notes. Check this. As a believer, you have, you have total access to the ministry of Jesus Christ. No, you didn't, you didn't get that one. You should be excited. Say, I have total access to the ministry of Jesus Christ, to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the ministry of God the Father. Say, as they agree in heaven, I'm part of the agreement. Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm deserving of everything that God has died for. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Change that picture about yourself. Remember, we live by faith, not by sight. You live by what? Not by sight. You are victorious. Come on, say, say I'm victorious. Say, say this coming week, by the reason of my righteousness in Christ, I shall testify. Say, I shall see unusual breakthroughs in my life. Hallelujah. Can, 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 can you just stand up quickly? Can you just stand up quickly? Open your mouth. I feel the presence of the Lord. He is here. He's in this place. God wants to manifest his word. He wants to manifest his word in you. He wants to manifest his word in you. You are the righteousness of God. There are benefits for you to be in righteousness. 
You don't have to live your life like a beggar, like a pauper. No, 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 no. You don't have to live your life like somebody's doing your favor to be alive. No, you have already received a blessing to be alive. It is not a favor. It is a blessing for you to be alive. I want you to lift up your hands. Say, Father, open my eyes. Let me see who I am in you. I'm tired of the lies that religion has been telling me. I'm tired of the lies that the devil has been telling me. I know that I'm above reproach. I'm holy. I'm reconciled with God in Christ Jesus. I'm holy. I'm reconciled with God. I am not the poor woman that people want me to be. I am not somebody who's trying to make it in life. I am victorious. I am successful. I am going higher and higher. There are only two directions in my life. That is forward and upward. I will never go backward. For great is he who is in me than the one who is in the world. Come on, somebody open your mouth. Begin to talk to your God right now. Riba sandimo shirabasya. Riba basiande mbakon. Zoti kasindam. Berokosi tabekesha ten. Riba sande jorika pasiata. Rembo sotika shiande mbo zotira. Peka ruka siata. Rebe sende mbo shita. Rimbe sande mbe kozi at. Rebe sitabako. Beriande mbeke zitarashia. Basandi ko zari beke shata. Besande mbeko. Zari beko zari beke shata. Besandi mbeke zitarosha. Ripasanda mbeko. Zoti kasandi mba. Shori beko zita beke siate. Shianda mbeko zari beke. Basende ko zari beke siate ka. Basende mbeke. Zari ko zari beke siate ka. Besandi ko uzati vakansi ata. Ripa sandi mbosi yota vaka. Shandi mboso tika. Peri ko zoti. Pera kasiete. Rimba shati ko. Pari ko zoti karaba. Pero baba soti. Pera kasati ba. Sheti ko zori ba keshata. Riba sandi mba ko zoti karabisha. Sianda mbe ko zoti karabisha ata. Besandi ko uzoti ka. Ripa shandi. Mbesiandi mbako zati bekesi ata. Sari wo shura bekesi ata. Shiate wo sori bekesi ata. Lord, I thank you. We thank you for the finished works of Calvary. Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ, and by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, wipe out every false image belief that we had about ourselves in Jesus name release the power of the blood of Jesus Christ upon our spirit souls and bodies come on begin to pray this prayer say father wipe out every false image every belief that I had about myself let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse, cleanse that image out you are free you are free to prosper you are free to increase. You are free to work in power. For you are the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus, the cross has done it all for you. He became sin for you. The Bible said now, he has reconciled us in the body of his flesh through death to present us holy and without blemish and unreprovable before God. That's who you are. It doesn't matter what you did. What matters most is you acknowledging your position in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your set time for victory. It's the set time for the victory of this church. It's, for the, set, it's the set time for our victory. It's the set time for the victory of the body of Christ. Let us not look unto ourselves through the pandemic. Don't look unto yourself through coronavirus. No, 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 no. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise. 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 
Come on, come on. He's holy, holy, holy. You holy, 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 holy. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the righteousness. We thank you, mighty God, for this gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, when the children of Israel were told to go and take the promised land, they look unto themselves through the eyes of the enemy. They said to Moses, we were like grasshoppers before them. We were like grasshoppers before them. The giants were too big. I want to put it to you that your giants are like gross grasshoppers before you today. That which you, it looked like a giant to you, see it as a grasshopper. You are walking over. You shall possess your promised land. Hallelujah. Can, you just, can someone just pray? Can you just begin to thank the Lord? There is an anointing that is being released in this place. Lord, you are way to be praised. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You deserve if the bed come on tell him Lord you are worthy you are worthy to be praised Lord you are worthy you are worthy to be praised Lord you are worthy you are worthy to be praised for you deserve Lord, I'm with thee. You with thee to be praised. Lord, I'm with thee to be praised. Lord, I'm with thee to be Come on, praise him. Praise him. Lord, I'm with thee to be praised. Lord, I'm with thee to be praised. For you deserve. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Oh, yes.
You know, when you worship him like that, knowing your position, when you say you are worthy to be praised, you look back where you are coming from. You look back where you are coming from. And you see by the eyes of the spirit where God is taking you. And you believe the report that you will see in the eyes of the spirit. And you begin to praise him. He said, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. For you deserve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know who you are in Christ. It might look impossible to you, but with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. He who has promised is faithful. It shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who has promised is what? Is faithful. He'll bring it what? To pass. Hallelujah, Peter, come. Hallelujah.